find the basic initial feasible solution to the following transportation problem using the Vogel's approximation method. So there is a company in India which has three warehouses W1, W2 and W3 and three stores S1, S2 and S3. Now these warehouses have supply availability of 61, 49 and 90 units respectively while the stores have a demand of 52, 68 and 80 units respectively. Now the demand at the stores needs to be fulfilled by the supply available at the warehouses. So material from the warehouses needs to be shipped to these stores such that the demand and supply constraints are not violated. Now we have also been given the cost of shipment for one unit from the warehouses to the stores. For example, for shipping one unit from W1 to S1, the unit cost is 26 rupees while for shipping one unit from W1 to S2 the unit cost is 23 rupees and so on. And we are being asked to find out the basic initial feasible solution for transporting the material from these warehouses to these stores such that the supply and demand constraints are not violated. Now the first step in solving the transportation model is to formulate the transportation table. In this step we have to express the supply from origins, requirements at destination, at cost of shipping from origin to destination in the form of a matrix. Now for this particular example we have already been given the transportation table. Now a check needs to be done to find out if the total supply and demand are equal. If yes, the problem is said to be balanced. If not, a dummy origin or destination is added to balance the supply and demand. So let's add the supply first. So 61 plus 49. So 60 plus 40 is 100 and 9 plus 1 is 10. So 110 plus 90 is 200. And on the demand side, 50 plus 60 is 110 plus 8 plus 2 is 120 120 plus 80 is 200 so both supply and demand are equal to 200 so this is a balanced transportation table now the next step is to establish the initial basic feasible solution using the Vogel's approximation method now in Vogel's approximation method the first step is to calculate the difference between the two minimum elements for each row and each column. So let's go row wise first. So for the first row the lowest is 10 and the next lowest is 23. So 23 minus 10 which is 13 is the penalty cost. For the second row the lowest is 13 and the next lowest is 14. So 14 minus 13 is 1. For the third row, the lowest is 16 and the next lowest is 17. So 17 minus 16 is 1. Now let's do the same for the columns. So for the first column, the lowest is 14 and the next lowest is 16. So 16 minus 14 is 2. For the second column, the lowest is 13 and the next lowest is 17. So 17 minus 13 is 4. For the third column, the lowest is 10 and the next lowest is 21. So 21 minus 10 is 11. Now the next step is to select the row or column with the largest difference. So the first row has the largest difference. Now the next step is to allocate the maximum number of units to the square with the minimum cost in the selected row or column. So in this selected row or column, W1S3 has the minimum cost. So we'll try to allocate the maximum possible to this square. 
So let's evaluate the supply and demand situation for this square. W1 has a supply availability of 61 units, while S3 has a demand of 80 units. So even though the demand is for 80 units, W1 can supply only 61 units. So the maximum we can allocate is 61 units. Now with this allocation, the supply availability at W1 becomes 0, while the demand at S3 becomes 80 minus 61, which is 19. Now since the entire supply available for W1 has been allocated to W1 S3, W1 is now no longer available to supply to any other stores. So we'll cross off the remaining squares for W1, indicating that they are no longer available for allocation. Now let's redetermine the row and column difference. So for the first row, the supply has been completely allocated, so we'll skip this row. For the second row, the lowest is 13 and the next lowest is 14. So the penalty cost is 1. For the third row, the lowest is 16 and the next lowest is 17. So the penalty cost is 17 minus 16, which is again 1. Now for the first column, the lowest is 14 and the next lowest is 16. So the penalty cost is 2. For the second column, the lowest is 13 and the next lowest is 17. So the penalty cost is 17 minus 13, which is 4. And for the third column, the lowest is now 21 and the next lowest is 29. So the penalty cost is 29 minus 21, which is 8. Now let's find out the row or column with the largest difference. So S3 has the largest difference of 8. So let's allocate the maximum number of units to the square with the minimum cost in this column. So the square with the minimum cost is W2S3. So the maximum we can allocate to W2S3 is 19 units. Now with this allocation, the supply availability at W2 becomes 49 minus 19, which is 30 units, while the demand at S3 is now 19 minus 19, which is 0 units. Now since there is no longer any demand for S3, we'll cross off the box W3 S3, indicating that this square is no longer available for allocation. Now let's again evaluate the difference of cost for each row and each column. So we'll skip the first row because it has been completely allocated. For the second row, the lowest is 13 and the next lowest is 14. So the difference is 14 minus 13, which is one. For the third row, the lowest is 16 and the next lowest is 17. So the difference is 17 minus 16, which is also one. For the first column, the lowest is 14 and the next lowest is 16. So the difference is two. For the second column, the lowest is 13 and the next lowest is 17. So the difference is four. And for the third column, all the demand has been allocated. So we'll skip this one. Now let's find out the row or column with the largest difference. So the second column has the largest difference of four. Now let's allocate the maximum number of units to the square for this column with the lowest cost. So W2 S2 has the lowest cost. So let's now evaluate the supply and demand condition for this square. So the supply availability at W2 is 30 units, while the demand at S2 is 68 units. So even though S2 has a demand of 68 units, W2 can only supply 30 units. So the maximum we can allocate to this square is 30 units. Now with this allocation, the supply availability at W2 becomes 30 minus 30, which is zero, while the demand at S2 becomes 68 minus 30, which is 38. Now since the entire supply for W2 has been allocated, W2 is now no longer available for allocation. So we'll cross off this box indicating that it is no longer available for allocation. So now let's again find out the 
difference between the lowest and the next lowest for each row and each column. So we'll skip the first row, we'll skip the second row because they are already allocated. For the third row, lowest is 16 and the next lowest is 17. So the difference is 17 minus 16 which is 1. For the first column, there's only one cost remaining so we can't find out the difference. For the second column, same, there's only one cost remaining. And the third column has been completely allocated so we'll skip this one so now we only have one row which is w3 which has a penalty cost now let's try to allocate the maximum units to the square with the lowest cost in this row which is w3 s1 now let's evaluate the supply and demand situation here so w3 has a supply availability of 90 units while s1 has a demand of 52 units so the maximum we can allocate is 52. Now with this allocation, the entire demand for S1 has been met. So the remaining demand is zero unit. While the supply availability at W3 now becomes 90 minus 52, which is 38 units. Now the entire demand for S1 has been allocated. So S1 is now no longer available for any other allocations and we already have the remaining boxes crossed off so we are all set for s1 now the last square available for allocation is w3 s2 so let's evaluate the supply and demand situation for this square w2 has a supply availability of 38 units while s2 has a demand of 38 units as well so we can allocate 38 units to this square so with this allocation, the remaining demand at S2 becomes zero units, while the remaining supply at W3 also becomes zero unit. So with this allocation, we have completed all allocations for the supply and demand. So this becomes our basic initial feasible solution using the Vogel's approximation method. Now let's find out the total transportation cost that we have achieved using the Vogel's approximation method in this case. So the total cost, now the total cost will be the sum of the individual shipments. For example, W1S3 has been allocated 61 units. So this is one shipment. So 61 units will be shipped from W1 to S3 at a cost of 10 rupees per unit. Similarly, for W2S2, 30 units will be shipped at a unit cost of 13 rupees and so on. So the total cost becomes 61 multiplied by 10 plus 30 multiplied by 13 plus 19 multiplied by 21 plus 52 multiplied by 16 plus 38 multiplied by 17 so this is equal to 61 multiplied by 10 is 610 plus 13 threes are 39 and 1 0 plus 19 ones are 19 one carry over 19 twos are 38 plus 139 plus 16 twos are 32 3 carry over 16 fives are 80 plus 383 plus 17 eights are 136 so 13 carry over 17 threes are 51 plus 13 64 so this becomes let's add the unit places first so 9 plus 2 11 plus 6 17 1 carry over 1 plus 1 2 plus 9 11 plus 9 20 plus 3 23 plus 4 27 to carry over 6 plus 2 8 plus 3 11 plus 3 14 plus 8 22 
plus 628. So the total cost of transportation is 2,877 rupees.